you heard about Yarn Lane, a TV show dedicated to knitting, crochet and all things yarn, bringing you demonstrations from our expert guests as well as the latest tools. And find out what's coming up on the show by following us on Facebook and Instagram. Subscribe to our email newsletter or visit the program guide on our website at www.yarnlane.com. Follow Sewing Street and Yarn Lane on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with what's coming up on the show, as well as being the first to know about our amazing offers. Get involved with our competitions that are exclusive to social media. And pick up some top tips from us too. In need of a crafting fix, there are so many ways you can watch Sewing Street and Yarn Lane. Sewing Street is live from 8am to 1pm every day on Freeview 73 and Sky 670. Alternatively, if you want to watch us on a tablet or on the move, you can tune in to our YouTube channel, the Sewing Street app, or the websites at www.sewingstreet.com and www.yarnlane.com. You can watch past shows on Sky 670 from 1pm every day, as well as our YouTube channel, the app, and our website. Yarn Lane is on from 12 till 1pm. Visit our programme guide to find out when and what's on. So, you never have to spend a minute without us. Have you heard about all of the different ways you can shop with Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? You can either shop on our websites, sewingstreet.com and yarnlane.com. You can also order by phone by calling our friendly UK customer service team. For Sewing Street, call 0800 001 4433 and for Yarn Lane, call 0800 4700 600. And don't forget about the Sewing Street app. Here you can shop all of the Sewing Street products as well as watch the live shows from anywhere. You can download the app onto your smartphone or your tablet by simply searching Sewing Street in your app store. And one final thing, no matter how many times you check out on Sewing Street or Yarn Lane in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. Happy shopping! We know that shopping online can be a confusing and sometimes daunting task. And sometimes all you want to do is talk to a human being. Our family-run customer service team are on call 24-7. Full of friendly, warm-hearted individuals, all trained to make your shopping experience as easy and enjoyable as possible. Not only will they take your order, they'll also help and guide you on your shopping journey, so you never miss out. Keep up to date with what's on Sewing Street and Yarn Lane, as well as all the latest news and special offers by signing up to our email newsletters. For Sewing Street, head on over to www.sewingstreet.com, scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, click the envelope, and you're done. It's exactly the same for Yarn Lane. Head on over to www.yarnlane.com, scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, click the envelope, and that's it. You are now subscribed to both Sewing Streets and Yarn Lane's email newsletters. Never miss out on the latest news and special offers ever again. to Yarn Lane, those of you that are just joining us today, um, or, or if you switch over from Sewing Street, welcome back, welcome back. Um, still with Wendy Orlando, and I'm so pleased that we've got her today. I haven't been on Yarn Lane for a long, long time, so those of you that have not met me before, I'm Vicky, you probably all know Wendy. Um, Wendy, we're so lucky to, one, have you, who's done the most amazing uh, block of the, the month, uh, I, I know it's been really, 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 really popular. But now doing, you know, your crochet, aragurumi as well mm. is really exciting. So especially for Giraffe Day, we have got our lovely Jeffrey. Now I know Jeffrey is very, very uh, personal He's to you. He's very special to me, yeah. He, um, he was created um, 
for my mum. So yeah, he's mm. very special to me and because sadly she's no longer with us so yeah he's very close to my heart <laughs> i absolutely love him he's he's just amazing isn't he um now he's chunky yarn yes. so a bet comes together quite quickly actually um, he's big he's a big giraffe isn't have he? you ever done amigurumi no but i've been told <laughs> that it is a, it's not because as a beginner crocheter i would probably steer clear from kits like this but actually i've been told aragurumi is probably a lot easier than or, or, or something that's manageable well as you know the first thing I always say start with the granny square I always say that okay but if you're confident with your granny square and you want to move on to amigurumi then this is perfect because he's in chunky yarn which means very often they're in double knit yarn and yeah. using a very small needle because you go down a hook size okay because uh, you want a nice tight stitch so he is made with chunky I mean I I crocheted him in a day, um, mm. but you know. You're quick, <laughs> you're very fast. I'm not super fast, but because I knew, obviously he's mine. Yeah. So I knew what I was doing with him anyway. So I, I um, didn't need to read the pattern too oh, much. I love him. Uh, now, I know that you've put this, this, this kit together with the team and have chosen the most beautiful, beautiful mm. chunky yarns as well. So in the kit, you have your toy instructions, everything that you need to make Jeffrey. Um, plus your two lovely chunky uh, chunky yarns, which are in. I'm looking to see because they always have cool names, mm. don't they? Oh, this well, is mustard. Yeah, they're not this cool. Is <laughs> this one is. This is a cool, cool name. Uh, and this one, this was called Bracken, yeah, and cool. it's got multi tones mm. in here. It's not just a brown. It's got the multi tones, which I love for the giraffe spot. Me too. Me too. Um, you've also put some felt in there for his face. Brilliant. More than enough there. And your pattern. All for twenty three ninety nine. Do you get the stuffing? Yeah, you do. Yeah. You're right. You get yeah. your toy stuffing. <laughs> so everything you need, your recycled polyester craft filling as well is included um, for twenty three ninety nine. Amazing price. We've got some other bits and bobs like safety eyes if you want to put those in, but you can just do it simply with the felt. Everything that you've got in the kit is enough to be able to complete Jeffrey. Um, Amazing. Loads of you have checked out on him already on pre-orders. We did put him on bright and early this morning, but he is just gorgeous we've been uh, doing a whole day giraffe day on sewing street so i'm so pleased that we were able to continue it through to yarn lane now obviously get the pattern and um uh, uh, of course you'll you'll be able to construct him but we're going to go through some of the key sort of techniques mm -hmm. t today aren't we we are so i'm not going to say this is what you do for this i'm, yeah. I'm going to show you because with amigurumi um it's all about crocheting in the round is it a japanese word or do you know where aragorumi I think, I think it is originate it, it's like the the for, the art of forming shapes so 3d okay. shapes but it's mainly for animals right and 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 like they people like little pe um, little people and that so it's it's a really really lovely art and because you don't have to join each time you just keep going round and round and round um, what you will notice it does give a very lopsided spiral now that is in, that is intentional because you don't close the round each time and start a new one you're kind of working up a hill on that last stitch okay. so that is completely normal don't think that you know it's a little bit lopsided that is what amigurumi does because as i say you don't close the round right um and i've done it so that i've got <coughs> a um a thicker yarn mm -hmm. because for those that are new it it is quite uh when you're doing like your decreases or you're doing your increases they're small, the, the stitches are small if you're working in double knit and it takes forever. And I wanted something that you could just go, yeah, that's just gonna be, I'll make a leg tonight or I'll make another leg tomorrow or I'll okay. make some part of him. Um, and it is working with the round. So I just want to show you how to do that. Now, um, what I've done, he's got four legs um, and they are the same, but I was thinking earlier on, if, um, and this is what you have left from the ball, if you wanted to do a few more rounds, if you do the top legs first, I want to call them arms, but they're legs, aren't they? So you do the top one first, so you know what you're doing and make them. If you make the bottom one sw slightly longer, you could tuck them up, tuck the other legs around and fill in with pellets and you could be a little doorstop. Oh yes, good idea. So I just thought, because, um, he, Unusually for him, he has a round bottom. If you look underneath him, normally when... Um, I've got one of those, actually. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Unusually for, for him in Algarumi. <laughs> Sorry, I'm at the round bottom. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, yes, usually with amigurumi, you'll cre create the shape to be like a body shape. So he would he would go um, from the top and then be rounded at the bottom. Right. Well, he's but got I've an given him base. He's, yes, he's got a flat bottom. So, so he sits up right. He perfectly. sits. He does. Now he's always going to lean a little bit because he's got a long neck. Yeah. Um, and we do have a technique when you're doing the neck. There is another technique to do that. But if you put plastic pellets exactly. or the recycled pellets in there, yeah, then he could be a little doorstop. Um, and also, I don't know what you're like with Maisie, but my children oh. love soft toys. Oh, absolutely yes. love them. And at night, I was trying to put them all up, and then they'd go up, and I put them all up. This one, you'll be able to sit him on the shelf, and his he'll bottom there. is flat, so he'll stay there. Oh, I love him. I love him. And also, I wanted one that you started from the head. Mm -hmm. and went all the way down to the neck down to the body so the head the neck and the body are all in one piece fab okay oh, that's good. yeah because normally with them that you have to add the head on after and then it's a little bit difficult to do that but he's all in one piece brilliant brilliant right so would you like me to start yes please now um, I think on the website, I think, I'm not sure, um, Hannah may be able to see for okay. me, there might be another brown on there as well. There might be another shade on there. Um, because just in case this was a little bit difficult to work with, because normally the darker colours at night when you're trying to work with them. But it's, we try to choose a nice rich brown so that you would be able to yeah, see with it. Yeah, on pre-order there is. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so we went for a slightly one. And then you would just need one ball of that. So okay. if you added that to your basket, if you didn't want to use this one, just oh, use this for this something one. else. What, what why wouldn't you use this one, sorry? Um, because if you're working at night and your lighting's not very good, so you need to get yourself a good light to start off with. Um, when you're working with darker yarn, sometimes they're a little bit harder. I know my nan said that working with white yarn and black yarn ruined her eyes years ago. I okay. don't think it was. I think it was she was getting old. Um, but yes, if you're working with dark uh, yarn in bad light with amigurumi stitches, they're a little bit hard to see. Okay, um, there is a turmeric on the website. Oh, turmeric. yes, I know that color, that's gorgeous. That one, I wasn't sure what they've gone with. That's gorgeous, that color, very nice. Um, and I'm going to show you in the mustard. Um, so it may not be the parts that it's designed for, but I'm going to show you because this is a little bit Easy harder to, to see. see. Yeah, okay. Um, do you need to say something? Sorry, you know, you have to stop me because you the know I'm like, I was going I'm to like a roller coaster. Say, um, oh no, was I going to say something? Okay, no, there wasn't anything I was, I, there was something I was going to ask, but I'll, I'll wait for later. You, you have to put your hand up because you know what I'm yeah, like. No, when, you when, keep going. <laughs> I love it. When I'm in the crafting zone, it's You're like, <laughs> I know, Paul came past. I'm on your fence, go for You're it. You're on my fence, yeah, yeah, we're there. We're on the fence together today, aren't we? Um, <laughs> so with um, Amigurumi, you would normally start with a magic ring, and that's because if you can show the bottom of him, please, can you show his bottom or his head, one or the other bottom? You can see in the centre of his bottom, Ooh. He's got a little, well, he's got a spiral in his bottom, hasn't he? He's <laughs> got a little spiral. So that real inner has been created with a magic ring, which means that once you've done one round, you, are you laughing at my bottom? You can pull it tight and you don't have a hole because no one wants a hole in the middle of their work. Yeah, we go careful with you, I was words. Be, be careful. <laughs> but that's the same. And this is the bottom of his foot. And I say it's a little bit harder to see in the in the brown. But um, oh, there we go. Oh, no, you can see it fine. Um, so you can see in the middle, you've got that tiny, tiny circle. And that was created from a magic ring. However, if you are new, you can work a four chain and then slip stitch into the four chain and work your stitches in there. But um, I'm going to show the magic ring because I think it's always worth pers pers persevering. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even sure if I've had breakfast today. Oh, no, I did. I had my Weetabix, didn't I? Bix, I had my Weetabix. Um, so we're going to create a magic ring. Now, you have two parts of your yarn. So we have this one, which is the tail, because it looks like a tail, so that's how I remember. And then you have this bit that comes from the ball, and that's called your working yarn. Okay. So you've got your tail and anything that's coming from the ball is your working yarn. And we're going to take our tail and we're going to just loop over our hand and place it over the working yarn. Okay. And then I reach through and grab the working yarn and pull it. And now if I grab that work, if I pull the working yarn, you can see that loop. So that is a magic ring, it's not, oh, it's, sorry, no, that's a slip knot, I've done that. Yeah, sorry, yeah. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I was, I was miles away then. Um, so what you want to do is you want to put your hand, you want to loop that all over to create mm -hmm. a circle, mm -hmm. and then you just want to pull 
that working yarn through. So you've got a little loop there. Now, I always look a bit odd when I'm doing this because I'm a lefty crocheting right. So I transfer it. So if you see a right-handed person doing this, it looks much, much smoother. Now, what you need to do, once we've done that, you need to do a chain one and that will secure that magic ring now. So right. that's not going anywhere now. Okay. And it also gives something for the first stitch to sit against. So we're working in UK double crochets and that's the stitch that you would work for amigurumi. And what we do here, we're working in this center ring. So we insert the hook, yarn over, pull through, two loops on the hook, and yarn over and pull through both. Now you can see that the magic ring is trying to do its own thing and that's why sometimes it's a little bit difficult for someone that's just beginning in crochet because it really has got a mind of its own. When we've done that we want to put a stitch marker in. Now you've got these haven't you? Um, these larger ones. Not I've these ones, yeah. Ones you've got, you. you've got, got, yes, you've got your, sorry, you've got stitch markers on. These today, are nice. These are, um, these have got all, all of the nice bright colours, different ones, and they're very, very similar as well. So you oh, get that's, 20 yeah. of them, six. Oh, they're brilliant, they are. They're like little safety pins, aren't they? Yeah. They're so, they're fantastic. I don't know if I've got any of the other ones because I've always had my bag of, oh, no, I've got one of these. Or you can get these ones as well. I think they're all different mm. sizes, actually. There's a, oh, well, the summer, I'll put this one on, actually, this will be easier to see. The sum with a, um, a couple of different sizes. I haven't asked, what size hook are you using? Right, I'm using a five millimetre hook for some of him and a four millimetre hook for other parts of him and that will be explained in a minute. Okay. Um, you would normally use a six millimetre with this, but amigurumi you need to go down because you want a tighter stitch. Okay. So I've gone down to a five. So I've placed my stitch marker in my first stitch and I want to work six double crochets into that ring. So we're going to insert your hook yarn over, pull through, two loops on the hook, yarn over, pull through both loops. That's two, and we do that again until we've got six, so that's three. Sorry, it's a little bit hot in here today, so I'm squeaking um, four. Well, I'm not squeaking, but the hook is. <laughs> Five and six. And now what you want to do, you want to make sure that these stitches aren't twisted. Now you can see at the top of the stitch, you've got that little V there. Yeah. So we want to make sure that these are all nice and flat. And then I'm going to pull it closed. I'm not going to pull it all the way closed because you don't want to do that straight away because otherwise you lose the first stitch and we don't want to do that. Now I've put that first stitch has got a stitch marker, but if you pull it too tight, that goes really tiny. So we don't want to do that. So now we're going to do an increase. Now um, for his foot, for, for every part of him, he has an increase after this first round, but it will just depend um, what sequence to do in. And I go row by row in these, so they are really comprehensive, these instructions. So now an increase, I'm going to do a double crochet. So you've just put your crochet hook back into, back that, into that first one. one. And then I'm going to put the stitch marker back into the first stitch. If you mark the first stitch of your round, if the telephone goes or the doorbell goes and you forget where you are, then you can just mm -hmm. frog it back to that first stitch and then you know. Frog it back. Rip, frog it back. Is that the um, that, terminology? That's yeah. unpicking. Lingo, is that lingo? Well, then off the lingo, that's the crochet because it's like supposed to sound like rip it, rip it. Okay, yeah. yeah. I like what a frog sounds like. Um, so I've gone one, I've put one stitch in there, but I want to increase. Now an increase in my pattern is simply work in that stitch twice. So I'm going to go into the same stitch and that's my increase. And for this particular round, I need to increase in each of the six stitches from the first round. So I'm working double crochets in each of those stitches. And you want to work in the top, so just under that V, and that's three. I should have probably used a bigger hook just for this one, because I think I might actually transfer to a bigger hook. Um, you want a smaller hook, but it's because it's so hot in here. Oh, sorry, that's yeah, it's, on. <laughs> it's, it's squeaking, so I'll go into a bigger hook. I've got so many in here. Yeah, I just get any air coming. Yes, yeah, sorry. Us. It's my age. You know that, don't you? <laughs> so I'm just going to create that magic ring again. And remember to do a chain just to secure and have that first double crochet. Did you something, come to your left, sorry. Thank you. Something to sit. I was just trying to get back to where I was. 
but you your stitches are going to look much tighter because you need to use the correct hook don't go up a hook size in this otherwise you will have big stitches so I've done one two oh that's better three four and five and six now to keep your tension even you want to make sure that your your working yarn is always free flowing okay otherwise you'll get an odd tension and if you do make a mistake it's yep. a lot easier to undo the knitting isn't it oh much easier much much easier I love I adore knitting I really do that was my mum's what my mum used to do and I absolutely adore it but it is much quicker to rip this back um, so again I'm going to do an increase I'm going to go in the same stitch twice now sometimes it may tell you not in my particular pattern but sometimes it may say to increase do three stitches in one but the pattern will tell you so I'm putting that yeah it's cooling down a bit in here now so I've done two stitches so that I'm putting that one back in the first stitch now some crocheters some um, teachers tell you to put it in the last stitch of the round mm -hmm. but I find it easier personal to put it in the first stitch so I'm now going to increase and work two stitches in there and then two stitches in the next and then I've just got two more to work two stitches what I've done now is I've turned those six stitches into twelve but I'm not closing the round. What I can do now is now that I've gone past the danger point, I can actually pull that center closed and it's, it's closed that center up. Yours will be even tighter because as I say, I am using a bigger hook because um, it wasn't going through my fingers in this heat. Um, so that's how you increase. Mm -hmm. Now mine do only have one increase so I don't say go into it three times you just increase once so that's what you need to do you've shown that now yes yes yeah, that's, that's all that's you need to, do. need to do and then you need to for something like this we're going to increase again now normally in double crochet you do increase six each round and that gives a really nice flat bottom mm -hmm. to it um, in the pattern for the ears it's slightly different for the ears because I want them to curve up. Yeah. Um, so you don't increase six. You, I think you increase three. But as I say, it's all in the instructions. So now I want to turn my 12 into 18. So I'm going to insert into the first stitch. And remember to place your stitch marker back in there. I'm going to work back into that same one. And then I'm going to just do one into the next. And I repeat that six times. So I'm going to increase in the next and one in the next. And that's how amigurumi is formed. You increase each round to create the shapes and then you decrease uh, to bring the shapes back in. And it is very clever because you unlike um, knitting with crochet each round you can create the different shapes really really quickly right. it takes a little bit more working out with knitting it's, you can still do it but it's so easy so you can now see that I've turned those 12 stitches into 18 and I'm keeping a nice round circle and you then, can see very quickly, I bet, if you, if, like you say, if you've made a mistake, because you get that pattern formed very quickly, don't you? Well, um, I actually, I'm quite unorthodox in the way that I go round, but I am getting people on, on to think how I do. I break the round down into six segments, and so there, there's a sequence that you do six times in that round. If you've put your stitch marker in, you can just do the sequence... And then when you get back to the beginning, you've done all your sequences. Now, it's okay when you've only got a few stitches like this, but on, like on the bottom of um, Jeffrey, you, you've got quite a few stitches. So you have just do the sequence six times, and then when you get back to the beginning, mm -hmm. that you know you're okay. If you've done the sequence and you land there, you know that you're right. If not, unpick it back to the stitch marker, bearing in mind that was your first stitch, so you need to count that as your first stitch, 
and then just do it again. Right. And that's the beauty of it. You will, if, if you, once you complete sequence six and you're not at the stitch marker, you know you've done it wrong. Yeah. So then you just unpick it and do it back again. Right, okay. Um, right, so that is our increase. So, I mean, I think that you'll agree that that's, that's manageable, isn't yeah. it? If, if you can only just about, to, you're just learning to double crochet, which is one of the smaller stitches and sounds like it should be the easiest, but working in double crochets is, um, you have to get your stitch count right. Okay. Right, now what we're going to do, I, I want to show you how to do a decrease. Now, and as, where would you decrease? Is it right. to decrease for the neck? Do you decrease So, there? his hand, Hands, hoofs, his hoofs, yeah. his hoofs. So they go out, but then they go back in again. Yeah. So to get them to go back in again, if I were to uh, get, say, 24 stitches in the round and just keep doing 24, 24, 24, 24, it would be like a, a tube. Yeah. But if I want it to go in, mm -hmm. then I have to lose some stitches somewhere, and right. it's called a decrease. Okay. Um, so I'm going Is to... decreasing uh, harder than increasing? Um, it isn't. It isn't, but um, I do it with a yarn. We, I'm always telling you to do your yarn, yarn over hook. With a decrease in amigurumi, it's better to do a yarn under because it gives a much tighter stitch. Sometimes I've had people message me saying, oh, when I've decreased, you can see the stuffing through. And it's because they've done a yarn over, yarn over, and created a bigger stitch. Right. Whereas if they do a yarn under, which I'm just going to show you, it creates a smaller stitch, and then it makes your decreases much, much neater. So I'm actually gonna lose the stitch marker for now because I just want to show you the technique. So I'm now going to do a decrease stitch. And as you can see here, the, you've got your stitches. Now these are bigger because I've done the bigger hook so it's easier for you to see. You've got your holes that you can see just underneath those V's. I'm going to decrease over the next two stitches. So in the instructions you'll see um, DC to TOG. Okay. Now that means um, double crochet two together. So I'm going to insert my hook into the next space but this time I'm not going to bring the yarn over the back like that. I'm just going to grab it. And what that's done, it's come over the front of the hook. So whereas it would have had to have traveled all the way over the back to get to the front, we've just picked it up at the front. So already we're using less yarn and making a smaller stitch. Now before I yarn over, as you would with a double crochet and take those two off, I go into the next one and then yarn under. So I'm going to just grab the yarn to pull it through and I've got three loops on the hook and then this time instead of bringing it over as a yarn over I'm just going to take it in front as a yarn under and you can see that that's created a really small stitch oh, yeah. I'm just going to do a yarn over yarn over to show you so that's yarn over yarn over and then yarn over and you can see the difference, oh, yeah, how big and baggy that open. stitch is. Mm. And that's because the yarn had to travel over the back of the hook to get where it needed to go. Whereas I'll do another yarn under, yarn under to show you. So I'm going to insert into the next stitch and I'm going to grab the yarn. Rather than taking it over like that, I'm just going to grab it and pull it through. I'm going to go into the next stitch. I'm gonna grab it and pull it through and then I'm going to take it over the front of the hook and pull it through. And you can see the difference. You've got a much smaller. Now yours is gonna be even smaller because it's a four millimeter, yeah. um, it's a five millimeter hook, whereas I'm working with a six. Yeah. So I'm working with the one that they recommend for the yarn. But as you can see, it's giving me too big a loop. So right, when I go to stuff in, mm. I, I don't like to see the stuff in. Um, if you want to go down even smaller, then you can. He will be smaller and mm -hmm. take less yarn but the holes will be even tighter but I felt that a five was just enough for the beginners to get on board with this that are, are maybe new um, and because you are using the chunky it's much easier on the hands but that creates a much much and that's a brilliant technique in any um, if you want to do any decreases um, if you do with the yarn under method mm -hmm. then you are making a much smaller stitch and it oh. looks so much neater Brilliant. Right, the only other things that you need to know. Look at how quickly you can take stitches <laughs> out like that. It's brilliant. It's fantastic. It's scary though, isn't it, that you could just literally go, and you lose your work. 
I've done it a couple of times where I've stood on mine and it's like, oh, but I don't care because I love it anyway so yeah. much. I just, do and because I am a real stippler, stippler, stickler, whatever that one is, for a um, stitch marker. If you put your stitch marker in, then you'll be fine. Right, if you notice on his foot or his hoof, you've got a little ridge going round the top where the brown joins the yellow. Can there you see you him? Can you see him? It's, yeah. Again, it's very hard to see in the brown. But that is worked with the back loop only. Right. Now to do that, you've got your two, you've got like your little V in your stitch and then normally you would go under both V's to create your stitch. With a back loop only, it is as it sounds, we're just going to work in the back loop only. And then we do our double crochet. So remember, a double crochet is insert hook, and we're doing back loop only. Yarn over, pull through two loops on hook. Yarn over, pull through both loops. I'm just going to do a few because then you're going to see what it does. And again, this is a lovely technique to use on lots of things because, especially if you're making like um, little storage pots. Oh, it gives you a nice sort of it trim gives, on the yeah. top. Yeah, well, mm. when you do it on the base, so when you oh, start nice. going up the sides, if you do this, um, not only does it help it on its way quicker, it gives you um, a nice bottom to the, uh, yeah, to the thing. It, yeah, it does. So you can see here. Oh, yeah, yeah. And because I haven't done any increases, which I don't want to, because I now wanted to start, they pretend this is brown, you want to start the hoof mm -hmm. um, uh, to the top. So this will be the top of the hoof. But you can see, and that is just working in the back loop only. Right. Very so clever. yeah, that, that's another um, brilliant technique with that. Um, the stuffing <laughs> for him, <laughs> this stuffing that is brilliant, this, this yeah, really is brilliant. And it's lovely and it's soft, brilliant. isn't it? But he will take quite a lot. <laughs> you don't realise actually how much stuffing goes into these, especially if you want him nice and firm like you've got him here. Yeah. Um, yes, you want it to have a... You get it in the kit anyway, don't you? You do. Yeah. You get it in. And I felt that it was really, really important for this kit that what you get home is what you make him from. Because sometimes it's then say, oh, go and get this, this and go and get this. that. Now, if you want to use safety eyes, it's personal if you want to do that that's fine but obviously just make sure that you know what audience it's going to go to because mm -hmm. um, I'm uh, I, safety. I, yes your safety is paramount um, I suppose but, if you want it as an ornamental um, you know something that isn't going to be played with by little children then the safety eyes we do have the safety eyes mm -hmm. which can go then into your felt you get the felt in the bundle so then you put your safety eyes in yeah Fab. yeah uh, we have the black and we also have the the ones that are um, where they've got little pupils, do you know what I mean? Like the red, <laughs> they're red, they're really cool. So they're the black ones. They're one pound nineteen pence if you want to add those to your order. A pack of six, and then these ones, what are they called? R amber. They're called amber. Oh wow, they're gorgeous. Eyes. They are, and they're only ninety yeah. nine p as well. They're gorgeous. A pack of six again. Uh, there you go, that's what they look like. So they'll look lovely on, on top of the felt. You can still use those. And they're yeah. very, very easy to, to use. Um, they've got instructions. Tool. No, you don't need any special tool. Just make sure that they are um, secured. Personally for him, I wanted him to have these particular eyes because that's originally, um, that's how I designed him originally. Yeah. He, he started off as, I think um, we did have it somewhere, the corner to corner crochet. Oh, he's down by you. Oh, brilliant. Um, yes. Yeah, that's what he started off as. And mm. I just wanted him to have nice big eyes, but there is nothing to stop you putting safety eyes in there if you wanted to do that. Brilliant. You know, you're talking about stitch counters. Mm, they're what brilliant. About row counters. Well, right, so. Stitch. What, what's the difference? Right, when so would you use this a is a counter? stitch marker. Yeah. So you place it in a stitch at certain areas to know where your stitches are. So that is a stitch marker. They are row counters. Now, they are um, primarily knitting row counters because they slip on the hook. But as you will see, I use them for everything. Um, they so don't, what have you got yours on there? Is that well, on our I've, I've just put it on a little... On a little key yeah, yeah. Um, with a, one of these, because I like these to, to use a stitch. Um, so you spin them and they, they go up in number, obviously. They're brilliant. Count obviously, they ways. only go to 99. Yeah. Um, but 
When no. you get to 100, then you go to... No, I don't, even, I don't even think for this particular one, um, anything either. goes anywhere near that, so yeah. you'll be fine. But yes, it, it's well worth... If you've made him a few times, you'll know what you're doing with him. Mm -hmm. But a certain... It, I'll say, right, from rows such and such to such and such, you just need to work in the round. Okay. And all that means is you don't increase, you don't decrease. If it's got 50 stitches or 60, however many stitches, you just do 60 stitches, move your stitch marker, 60 stitches, move your stitch marker. And that's when they come in, they come into their own. Oh, brilliant. Um, but yes, primarily they would go on a knitting needle, mm -hmm. but there's nothing to stop you using them because they're compact. Yeah. And I like, when I go on the go, yeah. I, like to, um, I like to take things like that with me. Um, right, so I just wanted to also show you that you need, now I am going to, I'm going to brave this because it's nice and cool in here now and I don't think I'm going to squeak. Um, <laughs> you do need a four millimetre hook as well. Now, it states to Let's use... Go to your left again, sorry. Slightly it states please. to use a six millimetre with this. Mm -hmm. We've already gone down to a five, so we've already reduce, reduced it, but we're going down even further now. Now, his ossicones... Are these called ossicones? They're called ossicones. Here's another giraffe <laughs> back for you. I would have called them um, antennas. I don't know. Well, I... Oh. What are they called? Ossicones. Now, what I've done, Ossicones. I've called them horns, horns. brackets, ossicones, because yeah, I thought it was easier to write horns. Are. Yeah. And um, I wouldn't know. I'd be thinking, hang on, am I good? are yeah. these ossicones? <laughs> Is this an ossicorn? I don't know. Where's my ossicorn? It is an ossicone. Um, yes, yeah, so for <laughs> those, because they need to be stood up erect, so you need them a bit, um, they need to be more dense. Okay. And for his neck, now if you go down, and it's, it, it will tell you what row to go or round to go in, in instructions, if you go down to a four mil and you use the yarn under technique, yeah. you're going to have a real dense neck. Which will give it stability. It will. Because, and, and over time, he is going to, he's going to go a bit I floppy. I like when he's a bit floppy He's a bit well. floppy. He's had too much fruit juice. He's lovely. He's had too much. But, um, oh yeah, excuse me, Elliot. Did you see that? Bless you. What Bless else you. is going on about um, <laughs> You will find that when you first stuff him, you're going to think, yeah, he's, he's up nice and upright, and then you'll come down and he'll be like a bit. But that's because over time, stuffing will lose its When plumpness. did you make him? When did you make him? Last week. Oh, he's lovely. He's, yeah, and, and I, I didn't overstuff him because no. I, I should have probably put more on his neck. Now, if you, it depends what you're using him for. I know some people put things in necks to strengthen them. Again, I wouldn't do any of that if it's going to be touched and played with. Oh. Um, he's so cute, isn't he? Oh, Maisie will love him. <laughs> I'm not going to steal him from you, though, because he's very special to you. But. <laughs> yeah, he's very special, that one. But I'm just going to show you now the difference when you do a four millimetre hook. I'm just working with a four millimetre and I'm doing double crochets. So insert hook yarn and over pull through two loops. I'm just going to do enough so that you can see but it makes those stitches much, much smaller, much right. smaller. You can see how smaller they are. Now, if you can even further make them smaller by doing the yarn under technique where you just grab the yarn and you can still do that. It doesn't have to be for just um, a decrease stitch. You can do that in all your double crochets. And I saw a lady who'd actually made um, an amigurumi toy with double crochet and the double yarn under technique oh. and it was it was just so dense Compact, but it yeah. must have taken her forever right <laughs> oh um, yes Hannah was saying that she's seen some amazing aragurumi mm. things out there she says I saw Prince the <gasps> singer Prince wow. and aragurumi who else Gandhi oh. Bruce Lee gosh oh it's a book that we had oh wow and I know this was on yarn lane amazing so you can see that I'm doing the yarn under, yarn under, and it's making a much, much tighter, much tighter. So it depends what look you're after. I've okay. only done a yarn over for the main body, and then I've done the yarn under technique for his neck, mm -hmm. neck to strengthen it. But if you want to change it and do it, um, but don't increase your hook size because that will use more yarn and it, it, it won't work out. So just keep it to the, the five mil and the four mil. You can go down, but don't go up. Okay. Um, 
So that's that technique. Or if you wanted to, you could do a yarn over for the first um, and then a yarn under for the second part. So that's like a halfway stitch. So you insert, yarn over, pull through, and then take the yarn in front as a yarn under. So that's kind of a middling stitch. So you do have little options when you do amigurumi. You do the one that works best for you. Um, but I have instructed you or told you in the instructions when to change to the yarn under technique uh, to give him strength in places. Once you've made all your components, Wendy, yes. I'm, I'm, I'm probably skipping ahead here, but no. Right, so I've got my hooves are going to be, uh, you know, winter the legs. Uh, the legs, the arms, the tail, the Ossicans. horns, <laughs> and the ears. The body is one, but everything else, do I then need to. How do you sew them onto each other? How do you stitch them in? Right, um, and again, this is. This is I've tried to keep it really simple so you add everything on after okay so you make the head you start at the head and then you make him a bit fatter go into his neck and then do his body and then you make the bottom so you make your your base and then you stuff him now I have said to stuff him stuff him first a bit before you finish the neck uh, you don't want to over stuff him at that point because it's really hard to crochet if it's full of stuffing right so do put some in otherwise you're going to find you're stretching the neck to get the stuffing in okay um, so so then once you've made the actual base of it, you then do all his arms, no, his legs, they're all legs, aren't I? I do want to call them arms, so all his legs, and then because the hoofs are joined to the leg, you can either just stuff the hoof mm -hmm. and leave the legs with no stuffing at all, but they'll be all floppy, but mm -hmm. I like that. Yeah. But I put a little bit of stuffing in my legs, so if you have a look at mine, you can see that He's got they're floppy. Yes, they're floppy. They're nice to sit on a shelf and let yes. his legs dangle yeah. off the shelf. Look, <laughs> do the can can. <laughs> but if you didn't want to, you don't have to put any stuffing in the top of the legs. I oh, know he's he has he's had too much fruit juice. Um, then you don't have to if you don't want okay. to. Um, and so you have four of those. They're exactly the same. The two little horns. I should call them horns for you. Um, they're done with a four millimeter hook, so they're much much denser. Okay. Much denser. So once you've created the top part which I have not got a clue what that top part's called stuff that you just stuff that before you carry on mm -hmm. um, so that's and then the ears when you make the ears you just flatten them out and they create the shape for you oh that's a real a really so it's it's the, de the design has been so that where I, I, I increase oddly you, it's a really way that you in funny way that you increase them to start Very off clever. with and then when you've finished, you just flatten it, and that's what it does. It does it itself. Fab. So you don't even have to worry about no. that. I called it a muzzle because I have not got a clue what his nose is called. I yeah. called it a muzzle. Um, again, that's just um, in the round. Mm -hmm. And But if you have a look at the instructions, they are literally step Very by step comprehensive. Them. Yes. And Hold then, your hand all the way through. Definitely. And I'm on the end of a, of a message. But also what I've done on the back is I've shown you what each piece should look like when you finished it because very often you have all these pieces mm -hmm. and you go well I don't know if they're right mm -hmm. so that's what your head and body will look like unstuffed and that's what's stuffed I would have stuffed it at this point though I would have put some stuffing in the head then you've got your base and that's how you actually add the bottom on mm -hmm. and then you've got your legs and then you've got your little tail and you have to call them horns. horns there and then your ears so the ears will start off like that and all you do is push it in mm -hmm. and it will turn into an ear shape um, and then I've just said that when you sit, stitch the legs on you can do your top two and just make sure they're even but it doesn't matter if they're even who cares yeah exactly who cares it, it's you know he's, he's odd isn't he? he's rather odd um, but when you do the bottom ones then um, you want to line everything up so you want it to be lined up with his muzzle and his arm mm -hmm. and his legs and his bottom legs mm -hmm. and then they add his tail on but you would just sew them right okay with just a sew, needle just with a big needle so yeah. I, I have um, lots of um, different needles I've only bought two today I've made myself a little felt pouch because I kept losing them but have you got the ones with the uh, right, they need to be a wool darning needle. Yeah. So the end needs to be big enough to get the yarn through. Now, bearing in mind this is chunky yarn, so it needs to be quite a big eyed needle. Um, but I like to go as small as I can with my needles for the eye. Okay. Because I like it to be quite sharp. But again, just be careful when you're doing that. So if you, if, can you, well, don't throw him like. I won't throw him, I'll no. him a carefully Thank pass you. him. Do yeah. you know his um, yeah. spots? That's what, yes. Are they magic rings? <sighs> That's what I'm just going to show you. 
Yes, I was just going to make a spot for you. Um, oh, cute. Oh, he is. He is so cute, isn't Love he? Him. But so to because I thought if you made his legs longer mm -hmm. and tuck them up, and then put his arms around him like that, so he's holding onto his knees with, and then you put pellets in him, he could sit by the door. I think if you left his legs like that by the door, you might. Def well, I would. Yeah. I'd definitely forget that he's there. Um, but so with the with the arms. Oh, I love him. You're just going to stuff them if you want to stuff them and then you you flatten that top out and sew it closed and then you're going to sew it over and make sure that these are really secure because this is probably going to be like dragged along like that isn't it That's amazing, and again yeah. with the legs if you turn the bottom legs if you turn him upside down and put them on like that because then you'll be able to line them up mm -hmm. so you'll be able to see exactly that they're central to his top legs and his tail and that um, the tail I've stuffed lightly but I've stuffed that quite firm but I've stuffed this little bit lightly I do. Um, now the spots are super super easy because what I showed you should I make one that's, that's super super easy for you now you can either have big spots or little spots it's up to you um, and I've said that two to three per leg so that one's got that one's got two Oh, I think they've all got too much. Do you add them on or? after? Yes. So you stuff him mm -hmm. and you add all the arms and then you sew the spots on. So I suppose you can position them where you want. Definitely. You? And because he, you'll have character. And I would put the eyes on first yeah. and see what kind of character he's got. Yeah. Um, what I did do, you'll see here, I've put, this way around, I've put a spot quite close to his neck there and on the back of his neck and just at the front of his neck. Oh, that's now I've done game, this for a reason, yeah. because again, it's gonna make this neck section a little bit more stable. Okay. So let's make a spot then. So we do exactly the same. And for those of you um, with the magic, I can't believe I was doing like a slip stitch to start. <laughs> it's because, you know, when you get into something, you know what you're doing and you just... And when you just, slow it down, sometimes it's harder, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. You just end up doing something else. So not slip <laughs> yes. knot, this no, is the magic this ring. This is the magic ring. Um, so we've got our tail and our working yarn. And we're going to wrap it around the hand to form a circle. Do you normally do it with this hand? I know you're doing it as a right hand though. Would you normally do it on so, the other side? But no, this is why I'm so unorthodox because this is you how do I do it a magic way. ring. Because right. I've, I've taught myself to be strong in my right hand. Yes. It kind of takes over, but then sometimes this comes into play. So I always insert my hook with my left hand yeah. and then transfer. I am a little bit odd. I, I know oh, yeah. that. I know that. <laughs> That's a given. I know that. But don't forget to do the chain one because it secures the magic ring and it gives it something to sit against. And we're going to double crochet into the ring. Now I'm holding the ring with my other hand, so with my left hand, just to keep it stable. And when you've done one stitch, what you can do is you can just pull it a little bit tighter. If you want to make that ring a bit tighter, you can. So I'm going to insert my stitch marker. So that's one stitch. And then I'm going to do another one. I'm going to pull it a little bit tighter, tiny bit. I don't want it to do it too tight because I don't want to compromise that first stitch. And then do three, four, five and six. Now if you don't use a stitch marker and you forget how many you've counted, then you just count the V's back. But if you do get into the habit of using a stitch marker, I can now put my finger over that hole, pull it a little bit tighter so it's a little bit more stable, and now I know where I need to work into. So I'm now going to work an increase. So what do I do for an increase? <laughs> Is this a question? Yes. Oh, no. yes. It's a pop quiz at the end of the hour. <laughs> yes. Yarn over, pull through. No, no, so what do I do to, 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 to make an increase? What do I do? <laughs> oh gosh, Wendy, you put me on the spot here. You work, two, on. you work two in the same stitch. Two in the same. Two in the stitch. same stitch. So yeah, that was really nasty of me, wasn't it? That was it? really. You nasty. were just about to nod off. Then I thought, I'm not having that. <laughs> so I'm working two in each of the six stitches. So I turn my six stitches into twelve. I'm blaming you for not <laughs> for making me nod off. <laughs> 
<laughs> not because you be boring. I'm loving this because you kept me awake I'm sorry, all night. I'm so sorry. Well, I did send you to bed in the end. It was like, you need to go to bed because I stay up forever. And I told you, didn't I? I did a really silly thing before I went to bed last night. Yeah, yeah, chocolate before you went to bed. <laughs> yeah, and then it kept me up all night. And then I get, <laughs> yes. I still got some in my bag, so I might have some on the way home. <laughs> right. So I've turned six into 12 by mm -hmm. just working two double crochets in each of the six double crochet and now so that is my small that's that is my small spot right it's amazing done. so you can it's choose done. how many i mean if you want to do them larger smaller mm -hmm. how you want to position them even if you want, you want a big spot you can go you'll, you'll know once you start working the pattern and understand what i'm doing then you'll know that you can add on your own bits if you want to. So if you want to make an even bigger spot, mm -hmm. then you would just use the sequence. So like the sequence for his bottom, you would just do the first three rounds of that instead okay. of the first two rounds. So yeah, it's, it's really easy to add bits on and make him your own. And I can't wait to see people doing that oh. because you know that's how I perceive him to be. But, but that's how the image was when I drew him. Because he started off as a picture on my mum's wall in her care home. That's oh. how he started. Um, and then I turned him into the corner to corner. That, that, and this came next, yeah, and, and then, then it was the quilt. Yeah, and then and it's, then it's, it's yeah. What's next then for Jeffrey? Well, you see, he had to be called Gerald. <laughs> the 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 pieced quilt. Yeah, but he's really... Jeffrey at heart. He's, he's yeah, he's my Jeffrey at heart. So, but... so what's next for Jeffrey then? Oh, I don't we need know. a Jeffrey something. What else could we do? A Jeffrey oh, bag don't... maybe? Oh, we could do, couldn't we? Could we do could a Jeffrey do. bag we because it do. started, you say, as a picture, and yes. then it went into this, which yes. we have actually got the instructions for. I've literally been sitting since I've had the aircon because the aircon blows this way sorry. and then ricochets over to you. Yeah. I've been, um, had, as I've been looking for the blanket, it's been on my lap, I'm yeah, afraid. It's been on my lap. <laughs> um, just so you know, your Jeffrey kit, you get everything that you need in there. Your corner to corner stroller blanket is so cute. Right, I will just before you show that I have added a border on my own border. Okay. So, um, but I wanted to show that if you want to add a border on, you can do. What is corner um, to corner? Right, corner to corner starts with one stitch on its own and then the next row has two stitches, then three stitches and four stitches and so it grows like that. From the inside out? So you start Where from you one start? corner. Yeah. So you would start from his bottom, his bottom right corner. Right. So you would start, right, okay. So if you laid him down now on your, that's it. So you'd start from his bottom right with one stitch. Yeah. And then the next row, you'd have two. And then the next row, three and four. So that's it. So you work out like that. And then when you get to row, whatever row it is, I can't work, I can't remember if it's eight or nine, you then start bringing new colours in. Right. So it, you do a count so that you, count how many stitches you need mm -hmm. and then you bring the new colour in. So each square is a stitch. Each of the squares is classed as a corner to corner stitch. Okay. So I have explained, um, I can't think what day it was on, but I went through the technique of corner to corner and that's my favorite, one of my favorite crochet stitches because with corner to corner, you get to decide how big it is. Obviously with uh, this one, the pattern tells you what yeah. to do, but with basic corner to corner stitch, you can just keep going and going and going until it's as wide as you want. And then you start decreasing and come in again. So, right. and it's a beautiful technique. Um, and it's fun when you've got colours in it. I just, I love this. Oh, I do. That is beautiful, isn't it? And this is where the quilt came from that was behind yes. Wendy, the idea. Those of you that yeah. are just tuning in on Yarn Lane, if you love yeah. the quilt, it's on Sewing Street mm. website from today. Um, obviously, designed by Wendy, all of your pattern instructions are there. Once again, incredibly comprehensive. Everything that you need to know is, mm -hmm. is all in there. And it's just six pounds, exclusive to us at Yarn Lane. Um, Amazing. Is there anything else that you wanted to mention with this one, Wendy? Um, no, but again, I am on Facebook. Yeah. Um, if you if you need any help and you tag me and I don't turn blue, then I won't see it. So it, people are so kind on there. If they see that I've come up and I haven't gone blue, and they're my friend, they'll tag me. But you know, please, <laughs> please bear with me because I do eventually get to them. Oh, I see. I was thinking, what, what, what do you mean? But um, it tags you basically, yeah. as opposed if, to just writing your name. Yeah. If yeah. you write my name, you might not see it. I won't see it unless I go blue. Yeah. Because that means that you're my you're friend, or I'm tagged in it. Whereas if you try and tag me and I don't go blue, I won't see it. Yeah. So I'm not being rude. It's just I don't see it. Yeah. <laughs> no, thank you, Wendy. <laughs> yeah. Um, just to remind you kit that loads of you are checking out on now and um, there were over 30 of you who got it in your baskets and i think you were just waiting for the end of the demo 
If you're now checking out Well Done, you get two balls of your mustard chunky yarn and you do get one of uh, the bracken. There's different colour options on the website if you do want a different brown. There's um, a turmeric instead if you want a slightly lighter one. You also get two sheets of felt for the eyes, plenty there. Options if you want safety eyes, options if you want your stitch markers as well. They're all really handy to have. But everything that you need there, including your toy stuffing, is in your kit for just £23.99. Everything you need, including all of your very, very thorough instructions. And as you can see, Wendy goes through literally row by row, very comprehensively and brilliant that you've got then your photographs as a reference point on the back to see what, once you've made them, what they're supposed to look like and to just check that you're on track. Um, plus you've also got your eye templates there as well, which is really handy because um, I always find that more difficult than you think to mm, do. It, it adds is. personality to to, yeah. to Jeffrey, doesn't it? So. But I thought it was really important today not to just say, oh, here's a leg, this is how you make a leg. I actually wanted to show the techniques that were used to do the stitches Brilliant. because um, it's all in the instructions. If you know how to do the stitches, you'll just be able to whiz through the instructions. Right. If, if you just watch me do one leg, yeah. um, then you won't know what the stitch formations are. So that's why it's really... But please tag me or ask me any questions. Oh, thank you, Wendy. And jot down today's date because, as you say, Wendy, you did go through all those different techniques that you might need and if, if you say if somebody's done a granny square is confident crochet and granny squares have a go at this it could be your first aragurumi and look at him he's so special bed new best friend he's my new best friend oh he's going home with you isn't he yes he's going home with me oh, <laughs> and in him. fact i have got a little bit of a um, confession to make the reason his neck is floppy is the dog got him oh Oh, is the dog no. new best friend? The, the dog is absolutely crazy about anything I make. I don't think I he's not floppy at all. He's lovely. No, yeah, but so uh, I turned around and he was running around the house with him, which oh, I was no. not. But he's well loved. Yeah, he's well loved. <laughs> um, thank you ever so much for today, wow. Wendy. It's been thank a pleasure. You. I couldn't wait to see you again. Oh, uh, so Lucia's put, I love corner to corner. Um, she says, I've tried to follow a pattern, i.e., uh, do a, to do a Mr. Man, but got all confused. Try one, try one of Wendy's patterns because you are very, very thorough with mm -hmm. with your instructions. So it's not just like you know different generic patterns you can get elsewhere. Have a go with these. Is is my tip for you, Lou? Um, also, I need to mention on Sunday there is a special edition of Yarn Lane as it's Rebecca Reed's birthday. Woo -woo -woo -woo. We love our Bex. So oh. she's amazing. I know you speak to Bex all the time. Oh, all the she's time. always ringing you all with the time. different ideas, isn't she? <laughs> no, we just all the time. Yeah, I love her. I love her. So happy birthday for Sunday. Oh, happy birthday for Sunday, Bex. Oh, and I, must, I forgot to say, I'm so sorry, I forgot Go to on. say hello to Lynn. Sorry, and Mitzi, sorry. Hi, I, Lynn. I did warn you, I did warn you, Lynn, that I probably wouldn't do it because I forget. No, you didn't forget, <laughs> just in the nick of time. I you did didn't forget. Hi, Lynn. <laughs> um, right, thank you so, so much. I hope you've all enjoy, uh, enjoyed your draft day. Um, thank you for all of your input. Thank you for your pictures. Um, Tomorrow on Sewing Street from 8 o'clock, you've got John Scott, you've got Jules Fallon, first time ever on Sewing Street and she is amazing, dressmakers, you'll love her. Um, you've got Victoria Carrington, who I absolutely adore, I've not seen her for ages and ages and ages, years in fact. Um, so send her all my love and don't forget Yarn Lane back on Sunday. For Re Rebecca Reed's birthday, so join her then because she's got loads jam-packed treats for you. Thanks for your company today. I am back next week sometime, so I'll see you then. Uh, but John Scott will see you bright and early on Sewing Street at 8am. See you then. Bye.